the bucket list. See the glaciers before they melt. Go on an African safari. Encounter the world's largest mammal. The ultimate things to do before you die. Or are they? I travelled right across the other side of the world. It wasn't what I pictured. Sure we got the right house? I stuck my hands in rhino shit. Yeah. Had a taste of that. Mm. It's horrible. I was proper struggling. I was losing weight and I was starving. That's rank. No. That does stink. Have a whiff of that. I like the hippo in the house. That was the best of everything. There you go. I haven't quite got over it, and my heart's pounding still because it doesn't know what's gone on. <laughs> and that's what you're like with this trip. <laughs> you nearly done me in. Hello, and welcome to episode eight of An Idiot Abroad 2. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the star of the show, the little round-headed twonk, that is, Carl Pilkington. All right. Well, Carl's been around the world again. Um, thank you for your questions. We're going to get to those. Uh, but first, I want to ask, why did you do it again? You swore you'd never do it again. You swore on camera. It's a job, isn't it? Just got to earn a living. I'm in a programme called Idiot Abroad. Job offers aren't, you know, whizzing in. No. No. Oh. That is massive. You uh, chose the opportunity to be on a desert island, private island. Um, how did you find that experience? But you, you saw it. It wasn't a great experience. It looked beautiful to me. Fucking freezing. just a bad start. It's like moving on a rainy day, this. I thought it was going to be sand. It's all bloody rock. I travelled right across the other side of the world. It's pissing it down. Mm. It wasn't what I pictured. That's what I'm saying. When you have a dream, your head puts everything as you'd want it to be. Yeah. I'm not sure Ricky would be happy about this, Carl. I don't give a shit. There's no way he'd be putting up with this. Pop it over, over your head. Keep warm. To be fair, stuck on a little island, dressed in leaves, with it lashing it down, and you having to build a shelter like a chimp in a tree with gaffer tape, wasn't my idea of heaven <laughs> either, to be honest. No. In my head, I was picturing... A bounty advert. A bounty advert. That's what I was picturing. White sand, blue sea, couple of palm trees. Half a coconut with a bounty. Bounty in it. <laughs> But the point of that is, on the bounty advert, it's 30 seconds. She's loving that bounty. Mm -hmm. But she was pissed off after she'd eaten it. <laughs> and that's, that's the reality of it. Yeah. You don't look at the bigger picture, you go, that looks nice, and then you move on. One thing I've always wanted to do, and I hope I will get a chance to do it, which you did, the swimming with sharks. It looks amazing. That's all right, yeah. Good. OK. That, you yeah, really, cheers. Uh, you Brilliant. You brought that to life. Me, <laughs> yeah! You didn't ask me how to paint a picture. <laughs> it's hard, though. Other cool. people will always have their experience of it, and yeah. it's what they thought of it. This is mental, this. I can see him. Doesn't look happy. But, but tell us your experience, how you felt. Right, I felt sick. <laughs> I'm not very good on boats. I thought I was going out for a night to see a dolphin. Mm. It turns out it was two nights on a boat to see sharks. Yeah. Well, I'm not great on boats. I was in a room that stunk of prawns. I thought everybody's room smelt like that until someone came in and said, Jesus, <laughs> what's going on in here? <laughs> see, the thing is, people are only thinking these things are good because they've seen it on the telly. Mm. They don't see all the work that goes they into it. They don't see all the, the hassle, the trend. work. Yeah. Is this how you imagined it? No. No, I didn't. 
Oh, fucking hell. They sat there, these nature programmes that are getting a gorilla, sat in the thing with its family and they put nice music on it. <laughs> All the sounds and stuff. <laughs> Gorillas traipsing through with the family. Oh, look, it looks amazing. Body popping. It's in bright, sort of bright, you know, HD. Oh, that's amazing. I'd love to be there. Oh, like ET. And in reality, my toes were bleeding, I had headache, I was being bit by mosquitoes, and I got there, and the first thing I saw was the mum gorilla sticking its finger up its kid's arse. Now, you don't see that as, a, as an, something that you go, wow. Yeah, I think they will. I think people will watch this and go, wow. This one has been one of the wonderful tracks. Wonderful? Yeah. Look, okay. I may say 10 out of 10. They said part of the gorilla trek was it's all about the hunt and finding it and looking at them. No, it isn't. Bring it to the hut. Bring it to the tent, sit it outside, I'll look at it for a bit, shift it. <laughs> <laughs> That's seeing a gorilla. Carl, we're often accused of bullying you. This is a recurring thing, isn't it, that we bully you. But both of us, and, Carl, and Ricky in particular, is always concerned about your well-being, um, particularly in Alaska, if you recall. You are not going to be eaten by a polar bear, but... When you had your medical, I found out that you didn't let them test your prostate, did you? No. No, but that's... that's... Why not? In the UK alone, more people die every year from prostate cancer than being savaged by a polar bear. It's a bit of a weird time to bring it up when I'm in the middle of nowhere. It's one of the biggest killers, right? And, and that's just a simple test. So a doctor pops his finger up your anus and he goes, yep, you're all clear. And that's you relax for another year. I, I, I don't understand why you're suddenly caring about this now. I've got little battery left on this phone. I'm wearing the battery out. If right. something happens, I'm dead. Right. He's my best mate. Sue me. I'm worried about him. Yeah, yeah. No, but why isn't there ever anything about how's your blood pressure? Or how well, are your feet? You, you're in the cold. Are you warm enough? Are you, no, because, it was none of that. It was, yes, why don't you get a finger up your ass? Because often there are no symptoms. Well, I don't want it done. I know you don't, but it's good for you. So, um, can we... Bring the doctor out, please. Right, well, this is a waste of time, then. This is Frank. Um, this is Carl. Hi, Frank. How's it going? You all right? Good, Good to see you. He's the uh, consultant urologist at um, St Bart's. Yeah, St that... Bart's. Yeah. yeah. The thing about uh, prostate cancer is you can be perfectly well and yet still have uh, prostate cancer. And one of the ways that we can detect if that may be a problem is a rectal examination. The thing with um, just uh, feeding... I don't want to finger up the arse, no, though. Wait, you keep wait. going on about this. Right. I've told you time and time again. I'm going to presume Plus, there's a lot of ill people knocking around that Frank should be looking at. Instead, he's here debating with you two whether he's going to be finger up my arse. How long will it take if you did it now? If you went... No, wait, how long will it... 15 seconds. 15, 15 seconds. That's a long time, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. What are you looking for? <laughs> what we're looking for, OK, it's two things we're looking for. One is the size of the prostate gland. <laughs> Number two... It's the consistency of it. In other words, what it, what it feels like. It's a, it's a quick, simple thing to do. Carl, can I tell you what's going to happen? It's going to be about ten seconds. He's going to say, you're all clear. You're going to say, what was the fuss about? And you know you haven't got prostate cancer. But not, not today. There's no better time. Cause maybe, it can... maybe it's that you and I and the cameras and that are making it a bit intense. Oh, we've maybe got if a private went privately to another room. We've got a room, private room. It. We've got a private room. Right, you wait here, then. You stay here. I don't yeah, want we'll stay, you following wait, wait, wait here. Frank, do you want to follow Carl? Can you um, show Frank and Carl to a private room? Thanks. You may as well check his testicles while you're there. <laughs>
A lot of time I spend in, in operating. A lot of time I spend in clinics. So how many people are you doing a day? 10 to 20, maybe. And which finger is it? Is it a big one or a little one? It's the index finger. Why is that? Why not just a little? Because the, the prostate lies a little bit, a little bit in. So you get your hand, you couldn't, you, you just couldn't do that with your little finger. So you're going round a corner, you've got to go in and round. No, you've got to go in and then a slight, slight twist. It's, it's the thought is worse than the actual delivery, let's, let's put it that way. It's the thought of it. All right. And okay. I, I, <laughs> let's, yeah, let's do it then. Come let's on. do it. Do you wear gloves? Oh, that's right, yes. Do you know Richard Blackwood? Yes, yeah, comedian, yes. Yeah, he had, he had a, a colonic on telly, yeah. never seen again. <laughs> I think that's far worse. So, let's do a rest of your pillow. Then, what you need to do is you need to bend your knees up. Yeah. You need to pop that arm over there. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get some lubricating gel. I'll just. <laughs> right, so what I'm going to do is, if I may, I'm just going to pop, yeah. pop, pop your trousers down. Bend your knees up a bit more. Come towards me a bit more. So, you're yeah, just going to marvellous, okay? Take a deep breath. Deep breath. And out, okay? Relax, breathe normally. I'm just gonna pop a finger in there, okay? Deep breath, well done. Jesus, well done. that's high up. <laughs> Fucking hell. Right, that's surely enough, isn't it? That's right, you're touching well a lung. Well done. Oh. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Your prostate's fine. Oh, God. Well done. Brilliant. I don't think it's the sort of thing people pay us. Guy a subscription for, to be honest. <laughs> In HD. <laughs> well done. Cheers, Cheers for that, then, Frank. <laughs> now, you are a doctor, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Google me. You represent the men who will never have it done, some of which will die of prostate cancer. Genuinely. I haven't quite got over it, and my heart's pounding still because it doesn't know what's gone on. My body's gone, what just happened then? No one's ever been that high up. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a human magnet? Mm -hmm, they're magnet. Ma Magnets. Ma magnet. So tacky. Look, they're not even, they're not special or anything. What is going on? I've never heard of such a thing. Handy when out shopping. When when you go food shopping. Carrier bags these days are really weak. But very thin. He comes out of Waitrose. Done. I can't think of anything where you go, brilliant. I'm a magnet. When do you need to be a magnet? Well, what superpower would you like then? I came up with one. I'd be bullshit man. There's so many meetings going on where you know people are bullshitting. I just like to walk in, I wouldn't need a special costume, just dress like this. And I'd fly in, I'd go bullshit. You're talking bullshit, and they'd go, oh, it's bullshit, man. And I go, well, yeah, I, it is bullshit, man. You're talking bullshit. And eventually, people would stop talking shit. D that could take off. I quite like. I mean, I know you said you didn't want a costume, but if I could get a little costume for you, what colour would it be? I don't need a costume. No, but you don't need it, but if I got one for you, what would it have? No, I don't need all that, because that's just wasting time. That's more bullshit. How do we know you're bullshit, man? How do we know you're bullshit, man? Because I flew in. Well, well, you, you so you can fly. fly. So your superpower is saying bullshit, but you can <laughs> also fly. Yeah, but, but also, people know if I've said it's bullshit, they know they were talking bullshit. Yeah, yeah, but but wait. That's my superpower. Wait, no, 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 no. Your superpower is surely flying as well. You didn't. Yeah. You didn't. We could all say bullshit. No, no. Yeah. The flying is necessary because of the amount of bullshit that's going but on. But if in you the could world. fly. But if I can't fly, how am I going to get a? There's loads of bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? Keep jumping in a cab? No way. I'm going to be busy all day. No, I haven't invented this. It's not my fault you can or can't fly. No, Calm down. I know, but I'm saying if it was my superpower, I'd want to fly in. Yes, my point... And I don't want a costume because I'd be constantly wearing that costume no. because of the amount of bullshit that's being said. Yes, I understand that. So, you, so your point is this. Everyone can tell bullshit, but you need to fly to get there quick and get it out Just in the open. Can it quick? Yeah. And someone starts spouting How the can bullshit. you hear them? So you can look super, super hearing as well. as well. Yeah. So you can... Hold on. So wait a minute, right. Can you see... Can you see where they are? Or can you just... I'm just hearing it. So if there was a meeting, right, going on in Leeds now, 
And there was a bloke going, well, if you invest in this company, if you give me one million, I can guarantee you, you will make an extra million right. by the year. I will double... I will... I double, hear you. I hear I will you. double your investment in one year. <laughs> what? Bullshit! <laughs> That's how it would work. <laughs> you can see how... I know, because honestly, that's years and years of people spouting it. Yeah. Meetings, ever since being neck eye. Mm. It's like, that's, that's all you ever hear. OK, but in how would you programmes, in X so Factor, you... honestly, X Factor will keep me busy. OK, it's yeah. the amount of shite yeah. that is being told to people in that, and uh, all that crying, that'd be the next one, I don't know what I'd call it. That thing when girls do that now, I don't know where that's come from. When they're getting a tear coming on, they go like that. I want to fly in. Fucking stop doing that. Yeah. Fucking hell. That does stink. Have a whiff of that. Oh, no, it's... it's not... Not, I'd say, but smell. It's good smell. That's rank. No. It is. No. I've found that I've enjoyed food more since I've got back from Japan. Because you appreciate... Just nice food. Yeah, but that's only because you're only saying it's not nice because it's different, that, I mean... No, it wasn't nice in Japan. I was proper struggling, I was losing weight and I was getting moany because I was starving. And there was nothing, I was going around saying, have you just got any toast? And they look at you like, no, oh, and they give you like a squid bollock. <laughs> <laughs> There's just nothing, that's for breakfast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not like they save the weird shit for, for tea. That's breakfast. They start you off with weird stuff. And the hard stuff, and do you know what, Ooh. I didn't tell them, the people who were away with me. But I was struggling that much on two mornings to try and get through it. I was eating strepsils because I was found it? that my, my taste buds went numb and they didn't have a clue what was going on. And I just was shoving stuff in. Have a mid bit. Have a little big bit. Have a mid bit. <laughs> don't start saying you don't understand me now. Oh, oh, I'm going to be sick. There's something in the middle of it that's really grim. I'm going to be sick in your Japanese garden. Pretty good yeah. now at just shoving anything in. I've eaten geckos. <sighs> I'm not that fussy. I've stuck my hands in rhino shit. Yeah. Had a taste of that. This isn't me being a bit, ooh, mm. it's fucking horrible. <laughs> Apparently that's, that's like the, the start of sushi. That's where it all began with that. How did it carry on? Why didn't someone say, what is this shit? Pack that in. Stop serving that, and that should have been the end of sushi. 170 quid. OK, what do you recommend? What, what should they just, get over there? Just have a look at any other country's menu. Nip into any restaurant, get a menu and go, oh, right, that's what people like eating. Yes, it is, not phlegm. <laughs> <laughs> just something normal. <laughs> it's bloody massive, yeah, isn't she, when she comes out of the water? Oh my god, it's letting its own. That is mental. That is mad. My dad didn't let the cat in the lounge. Fucking hippo in here. That was the best of everything. An animal here that normally kills people, right? It's a number one killer, a hippo, right? You have to trek. You have to stay well back. You can't see it. You've got to look at hippos through binoculars. Suddenly, there I am in a house where someone's got one as a pet. A hippo in the house. Tea on demand, biscuits when you want them, hippo in the front room. That is the ideal. <laughs> Why always see them in the same surroundings? Because it's, it's in a lake. Cruel. It's not cruel. In this case, it can it go free. It would have been dead. It would have been dead, it was saved. But could I just say that wild animals should never be kept as pets? You can't suddenly start keeping wild animals in council houses in case you pop round for a biscuit and want to see one. <laughs> I'm just saying, that for me, I'll never forget it. It's a surreal moment. You, you've seen hippos out in the wild. It's boring. boring. I've, I've seen hippos in their natural habitat. Boring. What, what chair are you sitting in? <sighs> How Wait, good where's the would carpet? Where's the carpet you fat get? <laughs> so you're telling me you'd rather queue up at the zoo to see some animal sat like that on a rock looking fed up, then walking into a house not knowing what's in there, going, oh, what's in here? Wandering in, oh, that nice plasma you've got, oh, nice sofa. There's a gorilla in the corner. <laughs> Honestly, taking an animal like that and seeing it in normal surroundings, it makes it even weirder. It's amazing. I'll never forget it. I'll forget a lot of the other things. 
But the hippo in the house was the highlight. Hippo for you. in the house was brilliant. That and the volcano, they're the highlights of the whole yeah. thing. Fuck you now. Why was the, the volcano so amazing? Just because it's madness, it's dangerous. You stood on the edge of it. It makes you realise that the world is alive. You don't but think about that, do you, when you're walking yeah, about I'd, on I'd rather have one in my front room, though. <laughs> I'd, like, I'd go in, I'd go, oh, nice plasma. Yeah, new carpet. Volcano. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have some marshmallows. <laughs> I'm not walking. I've got one here. <laughs> He's got little ears. Long arms. Short legs. Is this your speech? Isn't that, isn't that a tragedy that some of these species could be gone in a few years? The mountain gorilla that you saw, now... Yeah, there's only 700 and odd of them so left. So precious. So precious. And yet you didn't really want to trek for it, you'd have rather it came round your house. With I wouldn't want them wiped out. We're saying they're the closest thing to human, so what's wrong in having them in your house? That's a very human thing to do. Treat them like a human if they're very close to being human. Come on in. Sit down. All right. Of course I don't agree with them dying. There's people who kill them just for their hands so they can have an ashtray mm. of a gorilla hand. How it doesn't even work. It doesn't work. That right. doesn't even work as an ashtray. Right. The ash is going to roll through its fingers. It's a bit chavvy as well as a design. Mm. I, my furniture wouldn't work with that. Nothing to do with is it nasty and all that. It's a horrible thing. You mean if it was a fake one made of... I'm just saying a hand. <laughs> Forget it's a gorilla. A human hand. If it was a piece of art, a ceramic... It doesn't work. No, it's the cruelty that I find yes, but disgusting. it doesn't work. Not the design. It's a yeah. beautiful design, a gorilla hand. Work. When it's attached to its fucking arm. But a hand there, look, yeah. it doesn't work properly. It works. We're talking well, about how vile and disgusting it is. It is. Yeah. But think about it. If there's anyone out there who is vile and disgusting, it doesn't work. As a, as a thing on a table, if you're putting your fag on it... Go like that, the ash rolls through the fingers. No, no, it's balancing perfectly. It doesn't fingers. work. That's the message that should be out there. Don't have a gorilla hand, not because it's cruel and that, which it is, but it doesn't work. <laughs> a double pronged message. If his head was there, cut its head off, you can put fruit in it. That works. <laughs> That's cruel, but I'm just saying it doesn't work. Yeah. One of my favourite things about this show isn't just getting you to exotic places or out of your comfort zone. It's you interacting with people. Are, are you okay? Yeah. I love this. Are you gay? No, I've got, I've got a girlfriend, 17 years. Fuck <laughs> boy. <laughs> hey? Fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> Safety's on, that's an AK-47. Yeah, I've heard of them. Crisp, biscuit, fruit, yeah, yeah, wiggly worm. My favourite bit, I just think, when he was, you know, cooking for the king and then he got caught up in the moment, like it suddenly is kitchen, when they go, they want another pudding, who does? All of them. I've only got one dinner custard! Like, suddenly, oh, but he's the king. Not in my kitchen. <laughs> I'm Carl Cookie Pilkinson. Uh, pudding, yeah. chocolate, uh, sponge, custard. Thank you. Quite warm. <sighs> God, I'm knackered. No wonder Rams is always swearing. Carl? Yeah? I think they want another round of cake. Who does? All of them. I haven't got enough. I bought one box of custard. You took it so seriously. Because what's the point in doing anything if you don't? Mm. Good point. I mean, there are some great characters in this. One of my favourites is the Russian taxi driver. I'd love to get him over here and you you show him around. No, you wouldn't, though. He... I was stuck in a car with him in busy traffic in Russia. It was a nightmare. Hope you do not value life too much and got good life insurance. The brakes in this car just failed. It's the worst car I ever bought. It's British and I never thought a car could be made that bad. Right. I think we found the Russian equivalent of Carl. It's because I was stuck in a car with this miserable bastard. But he was saying the same thing. He felt you were a miserable bastard, he didn't like you. Russia, though, is quite... It felt like that. It felt like you're not meant to be happy. Maybe he's your bog-standard Russian. Everything's quite hard. Signs, the text on buildings. I've never been a lover of font. <laughs> I think there's too many fonts. Right. But after being over there, they've got, like, one, and it's in capital, it's yelling at you. <laughs> Even if it's something nice, K, 
kittens for sale. <laughs> Everything's <laughs> in shock. Now, despite the fact you didn't really get on with Russia, the Trans-Siberian Express journey actually threw up some of your favourite things. You ended up um, at, at the Dwarf Village. Great. I thought it was really good. I mean, how can you fault that? It was just slick. You know, you had like a little Rich and Judy come out at the beginning. They sort of introduced everyone. Different singers. It was, it was like our life, but miniature. It's like a little Britain's Got Talent. There was a little Peter Andre who came out, did a little sing song. Little woman with glasses on, Lily Allen. It, it was just really familiar. Enjoyed it. And people at home, you'll probably get some going, it's not right. Shouldn't be looking at dwarfs singing and dancing on stage. But we do it with X Factor. The early stages of that are a load of divs. Everyone knows it. The people come in aren't pretending they're here just to see singing and dancing. They know the dwarfs. Everyone's having a good day. What's wrong with it, really? So if I was a dwarf, I'd definitely come here. One hang around at home. There's nothing for you at home. You don't get looked after like this. You don't get given little houses and a stage to perform on and all that. I've always thought being small would be all right. Being a dwarf, I'd rather be a dwarf than like Steve, who's almost a giant, because the world's not made for a giant. Being a dwarf, being on a plane, loads of leg room, king-sized Twix is massive. The world's overpopulated, especially in China, and they like over a billion people. Perfect. You want to be small here, more room. They need more of them, actually. And then I look at it and I think, is that, is that how we're meant to have evolved? Maybe that is the future. Maybe we're the odd ones out here, when you think about it. Be a dwarf. That's not good advice, be a dwarf. Well, how, how? Right, fair enough. But I'm just saying that it was one of the best times I had, that. And I think more people should go and visit, because that is helping them out. And something they haven't sort of tapped into, but I think they could make money from, is sort of renting themselves out to people who don't know if they want a kid or not. Because even though they were gr grown men, there's something that makes you want to sort of go like that on their head. Too many people jump into having kids and don't know if they want them or not. Some yeah, yeah. Pets. But would the dwarf have to affect the mannerisms of a child? They, they kind of do. The way they are around you, they're sort of laughing and joking. But that's what a normal person is, and most people are sort of laughing and joking. Right, what's your you. idea then? What would you get, to, get them to do? Get them to do anything. But they haven't got any work over there. But they can work. Doing what? <laughs> in offices. No, they can't, because the, the tables are too big for them and stuff, aren't they? You've got to start Still accommodating is. them. And nobody wants to. But we do that with wheelchair access. I'm just saying, you're all a bit like, oh, you can't say that. Well, yes, you can say that, because there's a load of old bollocks. What do you want to say? That we're I'm just saying say? there's nothing wrong with it. If one of them wants to act as a kid, rental, <laughs> he should be allowed to. <laughs> If one of them, I'm just What's saying, like, like if one of them... rental. <laughs> kid, kid rental with Dwarf. Now, of course, we asked viewers of the show to ask any questions that, uh, that they'd like to ask of you, and we could put them to you. And this is from um, Sarah from St. Louis in Missouri. Um, Hi, Carl. Just wondering, why are you friends with Ricky? You have completely opposite personalities, and he loves to annoy you. What do you get out of this relationship? That's a good question. That's a good question. I don't think we do have opposite personalities. I think we're very similar. No. No, we're not. But I think that's what I like, the challenge of it. It's like having a dangerous pet. <laughs> <laughs> you never know, it could end up killing you. And that's what you're like with this trip. You've nearly done me in a few times. I can be quite happy and I go, I feel a bit too content. Mm. Call Ricky up. <laughs> Two minutes, that's all I need. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't called him. Sure. Makes you feel alive. <laughs> Bucket list. What do you want to do, Carl? I want to drive down Route 66. All right, then. What are we doing? You at the cuddle party. Couldn't stand it. Uh, no, I, mean... I don't understand why you didn't just have a cuddle with someone. Well, with strangers? Yeah. What difference does it make? I think a hug is there for a reason. What's a hug there for? You hug someone when they're fed up. Mm. Well, I'm fed up now. No, you're not, though. Well, look! You see, you're abusing look, the hug. Look, Carl, gonna get Carl, one. look. Yeah, well, you're not going to get one when you're doing that. But we're I not straight... bloke anyway. Well, no, I don't you hug You general. said it wasn't to do with male or female, it was to do with being a stranger's. 
I know you better than anyone apart from Suzanne. Yeah, well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm still not happy with that. How would you feel if I scooted up behind you to spoon you? Would that be okay? Well, that's worse than a cuddle. That is a cuddle. That's more, that's more than a cuddle. That. What if I put my back to you and I face the other way? Well, that's all right, because that's just because we're all, it's crowded. Touching like that, that's just, that's just like being on a so tube. So I could do that? But you don't touch people on the tube. You do. In London you do. It's a nightmare in rush hour. Really? You'd love it. <laughs> It's ridiculous going around cuddling strangers, but mates always hug. Do you want to hug me? Yeah. Well, yeah well, only if it's all no. of us. I don't want him well, to feel yeah, left out. No, I'm not there. left out. You have a hug. You no, know each other hug. longer Stand than up. you. Let's no, I'm not having a hug. hug. Come on. Get off. Come on, have a hug. No, no this, this is right. Come on, hug. I'm not happy with this. Get him down there because the pump pad. Come, come on. So hold on. I think you should be on the floor, and we should have a little man with. Do you want to get on top of me, Steve? Let's have a little man with. Well, I want a piece of car, like. I know, but you can have a little. Love manwich. Oh, that is so... Oh. See? OK, now, well, I, I think I've got an erection. I think I've got an erection. <laughs> oh, God! Well, if you've got one, I have too, Steve. <laughs> is that Frank again? <laughs>uh, idiot abroad. Uh, ab abroad. Abroad. Idiot abroad. That's the program. The name of the program. What you back back? No. <laughs> idiot abroad. Yeah, don't shout idiot about that. Idiot abroad. Yeah, the yeah. name. I know. I didn't want oh. it. It was meant to be Carl Pilkington seven idiot. one. Idiot. Yeah, I know. Abroad. Yeah, yeah. It's not good. Idiot <laughs> name. Yeah, there's a name. Yeah. Idiot. Mm. Div. Knobhead. No pet. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm not. I'm not idiot. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. a friend came up with the title. You are not idiot. No. I don't, don't, don't need a name. I know, I know, I know, ah. but, but ignore the name. Idiot. I'm bored. Yeah. Okay, okay. Let me ask you a, another question from our viewers. Here's one from Gareth Sutcliffe, and he says, Carl, French novelist Marcel Proust once wrote, the voyage of discovery consists not in seeking new landscapes, but in having new eyes. With that in mind, could you sum up your travel experiences and offer your view of travel in a similarly meaningful quote? Don't piss ass about travelling, getting jet lag, eating food you don't like, shut your eyes and imagine stuff. Wow. Beautiful. Wonderful. I've had the shits. <coughs> <laughs> this is good. Kills you down. That's going to give you a headache, not get rid of one. Look how complicated it is just for a toilet. You don't have the, the skill of Bill Gates. Just have a shit. You can't do any of that. You can't do that stuff. But it's a robot. It's a crisp picker up or a... If you want some crisps but you don't want to get crisps on your hands, you use a crisp picker upper. I like the fact that you've got a bit of a rebellious streak in you sometimes. You go off road. And I, I called you when you're in Japan and you drop this bombshell that you've finally decided the one thing you want to do before you die. And that was to invent something. And you said it's because you wanted to leave a legacy. Which I thought was brilliant. Well, just because you you're dead longer than you're alive, aren't you? Okay. I'm coming up with stuff all the time. That's why I think this is my strength that hasn't been used yet. I can't do this sort of thing, really, this sort of job of being on the telly. Look at Dyson. It's only a vacuum cleaner, yet he's up there with Einstein and everything. He's well rated, just for a vac. And I reckon I can come up with something better than that. It doesn't have to be a cure for cancer. I'm not going to come up with that. All I can do is come up with something that I needed at the time and that I think other people will go, do you know what, that's a bloody good invention. So something that benefits mankind? Yes. OK. He, he, he pitched me the idea over the phone and I said, I'm out. <laughs> OK, well, 
pitch it to me now then. Right. In Japan, they don't have these. You mean they don't have chairs? Oh, they don't have chairs. Yeah, of course they have chairs. You try finding one. You sit on the floor all the time. When you go in a restaurant, you sit down cross-legged. You get a flat ass and your legs ache. Yep. Right? So you've invented what? It's the Pilco pump pant. I'm sorry, the Pilco pump pant. It's a pair of pants with a cushion built in the arse. <laughs> the inflatable pant stops your arse from getting wet. For men or women. Do you know the thing you put on your neck when you're on long flights? Yeah. I've used that. That isn't how the finished thing would look when I, when I make it. You know, this is a prototype. Pilco pant. Excellent. I sold some on a shopping channel. You're slagging them off, you're saying I'm out. Watch this. But this is the lovely man I was talking about. It is our lovely Carl to bring you some trousers. All right, how's it going? Hello. <laughs> good one, good one. Morning, everyone. Hope you're well. It's the pants we're selling today. Look at that. Not bad, that, is it? You've come on the telly to flog me a pair of pants. We know about pants, we've seen pants before. You haven't, have you? You haven't seen these pants. It's that bit there, that's the seller. That's what we're here for, that's what we're talking about. It's the Pilco pump pant. The way it works is you've got a big zip, a good quality zip. Look at that. Doesn't stick, it's a quality zip. <laughs> it doesn't stick, quality zip, all right? Open it. There it is, there's the cushion. You might have one of these already. Shove it in there. You know you're going to be sat down for a while. You're waiting for that order of the sofa. You're waiting at the bus stop. You haven't got a seat because the queue's big. The buses are delayed. Where are you going to sit? Well, the beauty is you can sit where you want. Sit on concrete. Sit on the road. Not on the road. That's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> sit on the pavement. Sit on grass. How good is that? And there's only 15 pairs available. 15 pairs in the whole world. Do you want to be one of the 15? Still 15 left. To have the Pilco pump pants. Look at him. Uh, Look at him in them. There you go. It's, it's, it's terrible. Show you how easy it is again. It looks like some sort of medical yeah. procedure, doesn't it? That's what people would think if they saw you walking in. They think that you'd, you think you've had your arse removed. Get rid of that. Look at that for a pocket. Look at that. Like I say, we're carrying more and more stuff around. Think with of carrying stuff in that. Your, your arse. Yeah. Rattling around with stuff. Yeah. Mobile phones. Oh, football. Laptops, iPads, all that lot. Fruit. Look at that. Look at the size of that. Who's pocket. putting a laptop in their, in their arse? Loaf. Bread. You nip out to the shop. Milk, bread. loaf, you know, bread. You don't buy a carrier bag. They're charging you five pence a bag at the moment at a supermarket. Yeah. No, I'm not buying a bag. You just turn round at the cash point, stick your milk in there, stick your bread in there, off you go. A big, big pocket. You've got this. Health and safety these days. You've got that in there, you like a walk. Maybe buy some for your young kid. You're walking by the canal, he falls in. Is he a good swimmer? I don't know, you tell me. But if he falls in, he's got something to keep him buoyant. Upside you know down, like that. <laughs> he's, he's like that, he's drowning. Like, like a corpse. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, <laughs> the possibility <laughs> that he could. Help him out if you fall in a canal, a lake, a river. Um. Anything else? Anything else goes? Hang on, let's see how the orders are going. Have we had anyone calling in yet? Two people on the phone. What do they want? Do they want to talk to me or is that just... They've gone. We've sold them. Job done. Brilliant. Cheers for that, everyone. These are how they look in real life. This is the Pilky Pump Pant. Pilko Pump Pant. Yep. OK. I mean, it looks ridiculous. It does look ridiculous. So does most fashion these days. OK, no, good, yeah, no, yeah, if it was... Yeah, no, you're right, yeah, it's all arbitrary. Sit down. Yeah. Sit, well, why are you sitting well, the chair? You don't need a chair. That's doubled up. You must be too comfortable. Sit on the floor. Mm -hmm. Sit on the floor there, because that would be... And I suppose right. particularly useful if you've had a finger up the eyes. Right, there you go. So... Right. Yeah. Dead comfy. Yeah. Really comfy. Um, Carl, can you go and... Bring me my sort of bread and milk and stuff that I... Have you got five pence for a carry bag? I, I, I haven't, no. Well, I haven't. Hang on, don't worry about that. See you in a minute. What did you want? Bread and milk. Some groceries, yeah. Look, imagine walking down the street wearing that. Absolutely ridiculous. Carl, it looks... <laughs> it looks fucking ridiculous. He doesn't know. It he does. Doesn't it looks like that. You, no, no one, no one will walk down the street like that. Hang on. 
Hold on, Carl, I bought you, um... No, look, look. Carl. Carl. There's no restrictions. I've bought you a couple of cu uh, cups and saucers. Yeah. Can you take... I bought you these for you... you got a bag? Time. I haven't got a bag. No, just pop right, them in there. Pop them in. You, you, yeah. You see, you... Yeah, it's just... Oh, well, can you... Shove them in. Yeah, just put them in there. There you go. The, the, do you right. want to... Oh, it's safe. Good. Let's stay for that, yeah. All right, OK, all right, yeah, go ahead. Run for the bus, uh, mate. Quick, there, quick there, mate. Run, the bus, run, 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 quick, quick. <laughs> Suzanne's at home. Oh, <laughs> here comes Carl. Here comes Carl <laughs> with our new crockery. Honestly, that isn't pulling me down or anything. That is fine. That's... It's absolutely ridiculous. No, well, you'd bubble wrap them normally, wouldn't you? <laughs> oh, God! Unbelievable. Right. Wow. I just want to say, Carl, I was impressed all the way around with the stuff you've done. I like the fact you didn't do stuff you didn't want to do. I thought it showed um, real drama and resolve. You weren't just a puppet. You weren't just an idiot, an adrenaline junkie. You were doing things that mattered to you. Um, is there anything, though, you didn't do that you wished you had? If you could do it again, would you go, do you know what, I will do that now, I will bungee jump, or I will... Is there anything you wish you'd have done that you didn't? In Japan, I wanted to do karaoke. What would you sing? Do a bit of, um Chaz and Dave. That's what I'm going to do. 